And here we go again, designer Cole Worley revisits the plains of Afghanistan, the setting for his first published game and the site of the Great Game, a period in time in which European superpowers jockey over control over the power vacuum created by the fall of the Durrani Empire in Afghanistan. The British and Russian coalitions battle in a show of force while you, as a local tribe leader, will have to figure out how to maneuver a tense political and military landscape in Pax Premier 2nd Edition. The board is set up as a blank slate and a semi-constructed deck makes up the market. Each player will then pledge their allegiance to one of the three coalitions, and then the game is ready to begin. On your turn, you can perform up to two actions, which include purchasing cards from the market, discarding cards from your hand, and playing cards to your tableau. Whenever you purchase a card, you'll place a coin on each card that you pass over, making cards further to the right more and more expensive. These cards will go into your hand to be played as a separate action. If you are at your hand limit, which is two to start the game, You'll need to either discard or play a card as separate actions before you can purchase. Every card is associated with the location on the board. In order to play a card to your tableau, you must either control the region by having the most tribes there, or pay a bribe to the ruling player holding the control marker. Whenever a card is played, units will be deployed according to the icons indicated in the upper right hand corner. The number of units placed corresponds with the star rating of the card. Camels place roads adjacent to the card's location from the coalition that you are loyal to. Roads are used by armies to travel between regions. Swords create armies in the region from the coalition that you are loyal to. Blocks will always represent a coalition unit, either roads or armies. Eyes will create spies which are taken from your player board and placed on any player card in any player's tableau matching the area of the card just played. Deploying spies will allow you to carry out acts of espionage later. Towers deploy tribes from your player board to the region. Tribes will aid you in gaining control. If you have at least one tribe in a region, and the most units there, including loyal armies, you now rule that region and take the control marker so that other players can easily tell who rules what. Occasionally a leverage icon will appear and cause you to take two coins from the bank. This is the only way for money to enter the game. But, if that card is ever discarded, you must pay the coins back. And finally, if a climate symbol is played, you will change the current climate to the matching symbol. Buying and playing cards will set up your position on the board, but many of the cards will also give you access to more action options as well. Each of these actions counts toward your action limit, and each card can only be activated once, even if there are more than one actions listed on it. The tax action allows you to take coins on the market cards or from players that have cards in their tableau from regions that you rule. The number of coins that you take is equal to the star rank of the card that you activate. You can protect yourself from taxation by having yellow economic cards in your own tableau. The build action allows you to place up to three armies or roads in a region you rule. Each unit placed will cost you two coins. The gift action allows you to purchase a gift for your coalition. This will increase your influence with them and give you a better chance at victory if your coalition comes out on top. The Betray action allows you to assassinate a card where you currently have a spy, including cards in your own tableau. Some targets are wanted by certain coalitions and you can claim them as a loyalty prize which gives you more influence with them. The Move action allows you to move armies or spies. You can move armies from the coalition that you are loyal to over matching roads. Keep in mind that multiple people can be loyal to the same coalition, so multiple people can move the same armies. Finally, the battle action allows you to remove units from a location where you have armies or spies. You can't target armies and roads from your own coalition, or tribes who share the same loyalty, and the number of units you remove is equal to the star rank of the activated card. The climates can have a large impact on the flow of the game, because card actions that match the current climate do not count against your two action limit. For example, any actions on this political card are free actions during a political climate. The biggest change from the first edition is how the victory condition is handled. Whenever one of the four dominance cards is purchased from the market, a dominance check will happen. If any one coalition has at least four more blocks than any other coalition on the map, they are considered dominant and points are awarded based on whoever is the most loyal. The player with the most influence scores 5 points, the next scores 3, and the third scores 1. 
If, however, no coalition proves dominant, points are instead awarded based on the number of discs each player has deployed. Whoever has the most gains 3 points, the next scores 2 points, and third scores 1. If, after scoring, any one player has 4 or more points than the next highest player, the game immediately ends and the player is declared the winner. Otherwise, the board is reset by removing all pieces from the map and play will continue until the fourth dominance card is played. If you're familiar with the first edition of the game, you might notice that there are a lot of similarities between the two. And that's a good thing. There aren't a lot of games that I'm aware of that deal with the political control of Afghanistan, or that tackle the dynamic of overlapping political allegiances. The revised victory conditions do take a bit of edge off, which can reduce some of the tension, but it comes at the benefit of added clarity. No longer do you have to squint at the board to parse information in order to tell who is in position to win. It's much easier to tell who is doing well by glancing at the Coalition Black track or the different player boards. It's a boon to newcomers indeed. This might be a turnoff to veterans of the first game, but be assured that PAX Premier 2nd Edition still excels in exploring the nebulous realms of power and personal agency. Allegiance to a superpower must be balanced with your own sense of preservation. In fact, because of the post-dominance check resets, it's more likely that players will switch allegiances, creating more room for negotiations and shifting alliances between players. The fact that the 2nd edition will come with an actual map, well laid out player boards and improved production all around is almost enough reason to consider picking it up. But, given the improved clarity and graphic design, it also becomes an excellent entry point into the world of historical Afghan politicking. And honestly, doesn't that just sound like fun?